Greetings, I'm C. Henry Adams, and you're listening to Social Networking with C. Henry Adams and the crew. A copyright lawyer engaged in a solo practice with a focus on licensing uses of creative content in various media. It's coming up next. Social Networking with C. Henry Adams and the crew discuss information technology and advanced technology that benefits small to medium-sized business. Stay tuned. Today on Social Networking with C. Henry Adams and the crew, we will interview attorney Bennett Lenkoff. He is the principal at the law practice of Bennett Lenkoff. As an intellectual property law attorney, consultant, and writer with nearly 30 years of experience, he has served as the director of legal affairs for new media at ASCAP, the world's leading music licensing organization.
And we're here with attorney Bennett Linkoff. He is the copyright attorney of the decade, and he has been in copyrighted for about 30 years. Am I correct, attorney Linkoff? Yes, sir. Could you tell us how you decided to become an attorney for the music industry, and what inspired you to reach this particular goal? Well, actually, I suppose that I stumbled into it. In, in the early 1980s, I was looking for a job, and there was an opening for a junior attorney at ASCAP, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, the Music Performance Rights Licensing Organization. And I applied for it and was hired. And that started me down this road that I have followed ever since. And even though I left ASCAP in the late 90s, I have uh, continued to work on issues relating to the music industry, either directly through representing clients with music industry interests or indirectly through my writing and my public speaking on issues relating to the use of recorded music on the Internet. Can you tell us what is the greatest thing that you have done regarding your career in the music industry, in your opinion? To me, the most significant single accomplishment that I had was while I was with ASCAP, shortly after the Internet arose in the, in the mid-90s as a, as a consumer phenomenon, ASCAP decided that it had to create a license agreement that would allow for it to license public performances of the copyrighted musical works that ASCAP represents. And I was, at that point, promoted to become Director of Legal Affairs for New Media at ASCAP, and I was asked to create that license agreement. And I worked on it for nearly a year and came up with what turned out to be the first license issued by a collecting society for public for licensing of public performances of music through Internet transmissions. Now, since then, I've con- since even since leaving ASCAP, I've continued to work on the on that question: How do you effectively and fairly license transmissions of recorded music on the internet? And my work on that has developed quite a bit since leaving ASCAP, because once I was once I was outside of working for ASCAP itself, I was allowed to look at these questions from a broader perspective and take into account the interests of the other stakeholders that are involved in use of music on the Internet and through mobile means. And I continue to work on that to this day. That's, that's in fact, why, why, why we're talking here now. I understand. And you have an article in layman terms that you have, the article is called Common Sense. Well, actually, uh, yes, there was, uh, I published a law review article three or four years ago called Common Sense Accommodation and Sound Policy for the Digital Music Marketplace. And it's a, it's a long and complicated law review article. And since then, however, in response to uh, requests from various people who aren't so interested in reading law review articles, I created a, a new version of the article that is, is simply called On Music Licensing in the Digital Age, and it too is available on my website, and I'll provide you with a link to it, of course. And it explains my proposal for how to deal with what this, what seems to be insoluble problem, this crisis in the music marketplace, in layman's terms that are understandable by a, yes, 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 I, 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 in response to requests from people who weren't attorneys and who wanted to be able to have access to my proposal, I rewrote it in layman's terms in a, in a new version of, of the original proposal. And that's up on my website in an article called On Music Licensing in the Digital Age. Please briefly tell us about your proposal that you created on how the music industry could benefit from the digital technology evolution. To follow up on uh, on what we were just discussing before, the digital transmission right, my proposal, the new right that I propose, would not depend on access restrictions and anti-copying measures for its success. Its monetization would not involve the imposition on music industry rights holders of a compulsory license. 
It would not require that a broadband access tax be imposed on Internet users, and it would not require the compelled enlistment of ISPs or colleges and universities as enforcers on behalf of music industry rights holders, which is going on today with the three strikes legislation around the world. On the other hand, implementation of the digital transmission right would promote technological innovation, enhance the free markets for consumer electronics and technology products, facilitate the growth of all manner of licensed music services, including licensed streaming, download, and music locker services, as well as licensed peer-to-peer -peer and social networks, and it would allow consumers to lawfully enjoy music how, when, and where consumers themselves decide. But most importantly, the digital transmission right, through the digital transmission right, authorized transmissions of recorded music could be made available from the largest number and widest array of licensed sources anytime, anywhere, to anyone with network access. And the emphasis that there is on licensed services. This would reverse the music industry's decline and allow songwriters, music publishers, recording artists, and record labels to do as well, if not better, financially than they have done under the system that my proposal would replace. What can we expect in the coming months regarding projects you can share with us that you are currently working on? I'm working on turning my proposal into a book-length presentation. I'm working on that right now. I think that in a rather than as a law review article, but rather in a in the form of a book, it might get wider attention, and I, that's a way for me to contribute in a more direct and meaningful way to the public debate on on how to resolve the crisis in the digital music marketplace. We look forward to that proposal. <laughs> well, thank you very much. If someone wanted to call you, turn it in, call, could you give us your telephone number? Certainly. My mobile number, which is also listed on my website, by the way, is 646-592-1003. And could you also tell us your website? It is BennettLinkoff.com, the website named after myself. Thank you very much, Attorney Bennett Linkoff. This has truly been an honor, and Attorney Bennett Linkoff has been in the music business since the 1980s. He's been working with ASCAP for a number of years. He's an expert. That's, all, that's, that's the best way for me to say it. Of course, now, you, you have to make sure that your your listeners understand that I'm no longer with ASCAP and that I, I'm an independent solo practitioner on my own. Well, you just told him. Okay. <laughs> but thank you, Attorney Linkoff. Thank you, Mr. Adams. If you are a singer-songwriter and would like to debut your song on social networking with C. Henry Adams and the crew, give us a call or text at 404-348-8319. You can also email us at media at biemediagroup.com. If you are an artist and would like to debut your music on social networking with C. Henry Adams and the crew, and feel free to send us a copy. And we would be glad to debut your song on our show.